So in this example, we have the reaction of 1,2-dibromopentane with molten or fused potassium hydroxide. First thing to recognize is that this is a very harsh basic environment and that we have a vicinal dihalide, which is going to lead to an alkyne. So the first step in this is to do an E2 reaction between the base and either the hydrogen on the one position or on the two position. It doesn't matter, we're gonna end up with the same thing in the end. But if we abstract the one position, we end up with a two bromo, one pentene. This compound then can undergo a second E2 elimination. Now this one is considerably harder and this is really where we need the very harsh basic conditions of the molten potassium hydroxide. We could also do a similar thing with sodamide at elevated temperatures like around 150 degrees and it would give you initially the same thing which is one pentine. Now one of the tricky things about these kinds of problems is that the alkyne that we initially generate can in fact migrate under these very basic conditions. And the way that that happens is shown here. Basically your base can abstract a hydrogen that is next to the triple bond in this manner to generate an allene anion. So an allene is a compound that has two double bonds on the same carbon. The alenes are generally a little bit less stable than the alkynes, but they are easy enough to make that they can serve as an intermediate, especially when you have a very strong base like molten potassium hydroxide. So this wouldn't happen in an aqueous environment where the base concentration would be much lower, but it happens here. Now in this next step, this alenyl anion will abstract a proton from the surrounding medium. and that's represented here by a BH. So this could be, represent the water that was formed in the previous step, or possibly it could be the OH groups uh, from potassium hydroxide. What happens is that we generate this neutral allene. Now this allene can once again form an allenyl carbanion under these very basic conditions, but instead of abstracting a hydrogen from the one position, which would just bring us backwards, it will abstract a position, at position three on the other side of the allenyl group. By doing that, we can then generate uh, another allenyl carbanion. Now this carbanion, in the same way that we've done a couple of steps ago, can again abstract a hydrogen from the environment, but this time it's going to put it on the one position. So follow the arrows here. The lone pair on the carbanion is forming a triple bond which we see here, and putting that final hydrogen on the terminal methyl group. So what we've done effectively in these past few steps is we have migrated the triple bond from the one position to the two position. Now this will happen under these conditions. The triple bond can migrate all over the place and where it ends up depends on the base that we're using. In this case, we're using molten potassium hydroxide and we will be isolating typically the more stable alkyne, which is the internal alkyne. Internal alkynes are a little bit more stable than terminal ones, and so with molten potassium hydroxide, that's what we'd end up with. In the case of pentine, there really is only one position that is internal. If we were to put the triple bond over here, it would still be two pentine. So the only other outcome that we could get from this reaction is if we had used sodamide, which will prefer the terminal alkynes. It really doesn't matter where you start from. The nature of the base will tell you where you end up.